Hi, I'm Dave Stouffer. Before this final journey to JC's world, I want to thank you for coming along with me. In the 11 readings so far, I've shared with you the journey of JC from a self-satisfied lazy minister in title only to a dedicated shepherd of Prophetstown Trinity Church's congregation. Today's reading returns to JC's world in book two of the Reverend Mr. JC series. J.C. now his mentor and his young associate, the Reverend Franklin Roosevelt Millsap Jr., couldn't be more different than him. Our story opens with the two on their way to a minister's conference. It was about 120 miles from Prophetstown to Van Buren. They'd left at six in the morning so they could be there on time, and the first few miles were pretty quiet. Both men were still a little sleepy. Frank had been looking out the passenger side window, watching the trees and fields go by. He didn't turn his head as he asked in a small voice, Do you know your Bible very well, sir? Pardon me? Frank turned. I asked, Do you know your Bible very well? As a matter of fact, J.C. didn't. He kind of knew where to find things. Before coming to Prophetstown, he saw the Bible as a resource book to look up scriptures for Sunday morning, not a book for study. Well, as good as anybody, I guess. I've spent most of my life reading and studying the Bible, said Frank. And what have you learned? asked J.C. I've learned that God wants to be worshipped. Take the Psalms, for example. They're all about worshipping God. There are many passages about lifting our hearts and praying unceasingly. Frank was on a roll. He paused for a moment, then blurted, and I don't see what we're doing around town has to do with worship. I don't see what pounding nails has to do with prayer. J.C. had the good sense to keep his mouth shut. Frank had never talked like this before. I think all the time you spend on your knees working on somebody's sink could be spent on your knees in prayer and worship, and I don't want to do it anymore. Well, J.C. thought, that's one way of getting partially over the speed bump. He's got it out in the open. And he prayed for God to help him with his answer. Finally, J.C. said, Do you know what my idea of ministry was before I came to Prophetstown? I've heard things. J.C. continued over the top of Frank's response. My idea was to dress nice, have shiny shoes and starched shirts, put on the best show I could Sunday morning, then hide in my office or play golf during the rest of the week. I thought that's what ministers did. But instead of kicking me out of the ministry, the bishop offered me a choice. Go to Prophetstown and work under a man who is completely different from me, or go to a nursing home and be their token chaplain. Well, obviously you came to Prophetstown. Frank was now involved in the conversation. Yes, I did. And I met James Edwards, who was my complete opposite. Even though he was one of the most compassionate spiritual men I have ever met, he was also very practical. James had been in the army. He was a little more blunt than the bishop. He didn't want me here. The choice he gave me simply was my way or the highway. What did that mean, asked Frank. It meant that every morning of every day of every week, I was to climb out of bed and listen to his orders for what he wanted me to do, to work, to get blisters, to have sore aching muscles, busted fingers, dirt under my fingernails. Or the highway, queried Frank. Or the highway meant get out. I hated him. I hated what he was making me do. I hated the clothes I had to wear. I hated the people I had to talk to. I hated the hospital rooms I had to go into. Frank now had his left leg tucked under him as he swiveled around on the seat to look at J.C. I hated it all, Frank. Then why did you stay, sir? Frank asked. Because, Frank, very slowly, in the hate and the pain, I came to understand that he was right. You talk about your scripture. In the book of James, which I often thought was interesting because my mentor, my teacher, my great friend was also named James. In the book of James, it says, faith without works is dead. I'm familiar with that verse, Frank said. James 2, 17. So what I believe, Frank, is that just having the faith, just having the devotional time, 
Just having a prayer and a worship time isn't enough. You have to take that devotion and that faith and turn it to practical matters. I made a mistake, Frank, with you. I tried to do to you what Pastor James had done to me, to force you to go here and do this and go there and do that. Now I think the reason I made that mistake is I didn't listen to the voice of James Edwards in my heart to help me understand that everyone serves God in their own way. I see how uncomfortable you are and how awkward you feel making calls. So let's back off a little bit and maybe you can get involved with the music and the Christian education and the youth groups a little bit more. What do you think? I find it very difficult, sir, to talk with people. I'm not good at it like you are. I get in a group and I, <clears throat> I just want to let somebody else make the decisions. I guess I'm a follower, not a leader. Don't you have any ideas, Frank? Don't you see things that you might like to see happen differently? Can I tell you something, Pastor John? You can tell me anything you want, Frank, but we work together and we're both pastors, so couldn't you call me JC or, or John? Okay, sir, when I was in high school, one summer vacation, my dad had me help out at his office. He had papers to file and papers to shred, and it didn't require much of my mind. And I had an idea. If Dad would just arrange the baskets on the secretary's desk in different order, the paperwork would flow more naturally and would save time for the secretaries and be easier for Dad. So I told him about my idea, and he yelled at me. I wasn't there in the office to think that he was the brains of the outfit, and then he laughed. I quit having ideas. J.C. thought for a minute and then, so I'm not the first person to write over the top of your feelings. I'm sorry. J.C.'s seminar on community gardens went very well and elicited a number of good questions. J.C. was pretty pumped. Frank was sticking to him like glue. Instead of going to separate presentations as J.C. had suggested, Frank asked if they could go together. J.C. was feeling pretty magnanimous after his successful presentation, so he said, Do you see one on the list you'd like to attend? I'll go with you. Well, there's one on church music. Maybe we could learn some things to take back home. It was a positive request. So they went to the music seminar, New Ideas in Worship Music. Pastor Skip, a young guy in a Hawaiian shirt holding a tambourine, was a presenter. J.C. whispered to Frank, let's sit in the back row if we need to get out of here. Frank was appalled. We can't just leave. You're one of the presenters. People would notice. We'll see. Both J.C. and Frank were bothered by the Hawaiian shirt, but Pastor Skip opened with some startling statistics about declining membership. Even though that wasn't the case in Prophetstown, it caught J.C.'s attention. Then Pastor Skip started talking about young people. That struck a chord with both J.C. and Frank. Both were aware that the young people of Prophetstown Trinity Church were mostly high school age and younger. Sadly, there were few church members in their 20s or 30s. So they listened intently as the presenter talked about introducing easy to sing short songs and putting the words on a screen so the congregation members couldn't hide their noses in a hymnal. These were ways to get congregations to focus more on their worship of God and less on reading from a book, Pastor Skip explained. Frank's ears pricked up. Skip also suggested inviting a variety of musicians to play accompaniment, particularly guitars and drums, to produce the sounds familiar to and popular with young people. This was going to attract a younger crowd, Skip told them, but he warned, Expect some resistance. If you go back to your churches and start having guitar music, old members will fuss. J.C. nudged Frank and whispered, Darn right they will. They'll vote with their feet. Pastor Skip had an answer. You don't have to choose one style of music and reject the other. You can offer your congregation a choice by conducting two services, one contemporary and one traditional. Of course, churches with two pastors will find this easier to handle. 
Most churches have both services on Sunday morning, Skip went on, but some actually have the contemporary service for young adults on Saturday night. This suggestion shocked both Frank and J.C. We are Protestants, and that's a Catholic practice, thought J.C. Church worship services should be held on Sunday morning like they always have been, like God intended in the first place. J.C. also bristled at Skip's suggestion that it would be just fine to clap their hands with some of the jubilant songs and to close their eyes and lift their hands for the praise songs. After Pastor Skip led them in singing some choruses from familiar songs as a medley, he closed the session by announcing he had a book for sale. J.C. and Frank scooted to the door, Frank heading for the book table and J.C. away from it. The rest of the sessions offered less controversial ideas. J.C. enjoyed accepting congratulations on his presentation and visiting with some old friends. Frank was content to hover in the background. At the end of the closing general session, J.C., in a very good mood, turned to Frank. My favorite restaurant in this neighborhood is the Waffle Place. What do you say? I'll buy you some chicken and waffles and then we head back home. The chicken and waffles were very good. They stopped to top off the car's gas tank and then hit the road. J.C. was basking in his own happy thoughts and didn't notice that Frank couldn't seem to sit still. Finally, Frank said, What did you think of the music seminar? The question caught J.C. unaware and he blurted out an honest answer. I thought it was stupid. When he heard his own words, J.C. realized he didn't have to be quite that honest, but he didn't know how to retract what he'd said. This time, Frank's response wasn't his typical silence. What was stupid about it? How long have you been going to church, Frank? All my life. What instruments provided the music for all of your life in church? Well, the organ, the piano, and I think that the choir's voices are instruments. Agreed, 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 said J.C., and that's why it's stupid. What I got in that seminar was Skip saying we should be experimenting with music that's not in the hymnal, not the old traditional songs, and that we should throw a cover over the organ and get a drum set and other instruments, horns even, in the sanctuary. It just doesn't fly. We had a horn play once at Christmas Eve, oh, holy night, it was beautiful, but that was just a solo. It didn't replace the organ or the piano. Frank tried again. Not to be a smart aleck, sir, but do you know the story of Silent Night? Everybody knows the story of Silent Night, Frank continued. The first time it was played, it was with guitar accompaniment. J.C. countered, that's because the organ was broken. Something about mice or rats or something. Frank tried again. Sir? He couldn't quite bring himself to say John or J.C. Sir? A lot of the hymns we sing in Protestant churches were written by John and Charles Wesley, particularly Charles. Don't you think they might have been considered odd and strange when they were new? At the Trinity United Church in Prophetstown, we will worship with organ or piano, J.C. said. And don't even start with the Saturday night service nonsense. At the Trinity United Church in Prophetstown, we worship on Sunday morning. You could almost hear the wall being built between them as Frank went quiet. Once again, J.C. had put his foot in his mouth and hurt the very delicate feelings of the young man he was supposed to be helping. So J.C. is learning that he can't just imitate the formula that worked to teach him, because Frank Millsap is learning different lessons. And as the title of the book suggests, Frank's life revolves around music. Two ministers in the same church can't just avoid one another. Eventually, their worlds collide. I'll get it, Ruth. The phone was ringing, and J.C. was closer. Hello? This Reverend Wesley, Wilford North. I live next door to the parsonage. Of course, J.C. knew Mr. North. Nothing was ever quite right for Wilfred. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. North? Rock and roll. The devil's music. It's coming out of your church basement, and I want it stopped. 
Mr. Knorr. I think I know what the problem is. It's Wednesday. The youth group is meeting. Kids sometimes get a little rowdy. Maybe they're just playing games and get excited. No, they're playing guitars. It's so loud I can't even watch TV. Don't you even know what's going on in your own church, Reverend? I'll check into it, Mr. North. Thanks for your call. Don't check into it. Put a stop to it. And the phone clicked. J.C. said he thought he needed to go see what Mr. North was complaining about. You want to come with me? Sure, said Ruth. As they put on their coats, scarves, and hats, J.C. groused that normal people were home on a night like this. They drove a few blocks to the church and listened. Do you hear drums? whispered J.C. Yes, and a, a keyboard, too, said Ruth. J.C. squinted in the dark. Somebody must have brought records to play. Doesn't that sound like just a closer walk with thee? Ruth asked. Uh, yeah. But that's a little different than we sing it in church. Then they both felt foolish standing outside, spying on the young group and, and cold besides, so they went in. The music stopped abruptly. There were about 20 kids sitting in chairs or on the floor. J.C. hadn't remembered the youth group was quite that large. There was, in fact, a small set of drums, and the kids sitting behind them was from the AME church. One of the guitars was being played by a young man J.C. recognized from the Mexican Garden Jam Sessions, and a bass guitar played by Bruce Keller of his own church. Amidst the deafening, quiet, and unrelenting stare of 26 pairs of eyes, J.C. and Ruth edged into the room, discovering their daughter Jill at the keyboard. And standing at the front, his acoustic guitar plugged into an amplifier, was the Reverend Franklin Roosevelt Millsap, Jr. Be cool, John, Ruth said softly in his ear. This is probably harmless. Frank wasn't going to talk first. And as he was the leader, the rest of them waited. Twenty-six kids had never been so quiet for so long in the history of the world. <laughs> J.C. cleared his throat. Uh, hello, uh, good evening, Pastor Frank. Sir, came the response from Ruth. Hi, kids, how's everybody doing? A chorus of replies. Fine, great. Hi, Mrs. Wesley. Frank's and J.C.'s eyes locked on each other. Uh, I, uh, I just had a phone call from Mr. North next door. <laughs> I hadn't checked in on the youth group for a while, thought I'd come and visit. Here we are, Frank said. Here you are. What are you doing? J.C. thought he would see study booklets or tables or Bibles or pens and paper. Would you mind telling me what a youth group meeting looks like, Pastor? Frank waited too long to speak, and Abby Penrose, a high school freshman and member of the confirmation class, couldn't handle the silence. Oh, Pastor, it's just wonderful. We, we have a prayer, and then Pastor Frank talks to us about something, and then we listen to them practice. That didn't tell J.C. anything. What do you mean, Pastor Frank talks to you about something? Butch Fellows spoke up. Well, most of the time, Reverend, it's worship, you know, um, praising God and telling him how much, well, the big tough football player was a little embarrassed, how much you love him and how you can pray to him and how the music helps. From this description, J.C. realized that the youth group was not using materials published by Trinity United Churches. He decided not to say anything to Frank in front of the kids. And then you listen to them practice, he repeated back. Yes, sir. Frank had taken several steps back into the musicians. Daddy, we just like to play and sing together. Jill, what Wilford North told me, J.C. said carefully, was that rock and roll music was coming out of the church basement. That's almost an exact quote. Sir! The one word coming out of the Reverend 
Franklin Roosevelt Millsap Jr. sounded like the boom of a cannon. Everybody jumped. Sir, he repeated, it's not their fault. If anybody's to blame, it's me. Junior was about half his old man's size, had spent his life in Franklin Sr.'s shadow, but the old man was in that slender body. As Frank took two steps forward, the old man in him came out. Reverend Wesley, since I have been here, you have forced me to do many things that I have not wanted to do. This, this, whatever we are, this music is worship. And no, it does not sound like the hymns that you and I grew up with. Frank didn't notice, but each of the other musicians were moving closer to him. Reverend Wesley, you have accomplished something good in the horrible way that you've treated me since I came to Prophetstown. Ruth, her hand still on J.C.'s arm, could feel him tremble. The color in his face was deepening. When I came here, Frank rushed on, I thought there were only two ways to worship God, structured personal devotions and structured Sunday worship services. The mistake you made, Reverend Wesley, was to think that since my father pushed me around, you could too. He didn't realize, and you don't either, that music flows in my veins while you're out climbing on roofs and tightening pipes. I pray, I read, I think. The Catholics don't worship the way we do. Chet here tells me the AME folks don't worship the way the Trinity folks do. I was blind about that, Reverend. I thought God wanted us all to worship the same way, to serve him the same way. Frank was speaking more softly now. But sir, you've told me over and over again that we serve the community. That the Bible doesn't say go forth to all Trinity United Church believers. The things that you've done in this community to bring it together, it's awe-inspiring. But you can be a narrow-minded stick in the mud, sir. You're as set in your ways as I am in mine. A gurgle came from J.C.'s throat. He was trying to talk or yell. Let me finish, sir. Here's what you have taught me. Every member of this community is different, created in the image of God created to be different physically, mentally, spiritually. I'm going through a change, Reverend, in my thinking. Frank was talking as though Frank were the parent and JC were the child and no one else was in the room. It's not easy for me to go through this change. I spent my lifetime building beliefs that I now realize I've been hiding behind. It's no different than you when you came here. James Edwards and God took you to a rooftop and taught you how to care, to work, to serve. You took me to a bonfire, and God showed me that he wants me to sing and play and make music that helps people to worship him, that brings comfort and inspiration and maybe even entertainment. We don't do things here at the youth group that you expect us to do. If you want to be mad at someone, I'm, I'm your guy. But give us a chance and be a little patient with me, Reverend, my life and faith are being challenged and changed. There was a silence that you could feel in that room and 26 kids with big round eyes waiting for something to happen. And it did. Frank put his hands on his guitar and started to play. The other softly joined and a tune evolved. JC recognized it when Jill started singing, joined quickly by the group, the kids on the floor and in the chairs, and then by Ruth, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. The second book in the Reverend Mr. J.C. series is about another pastor learning to change, and it's about music. Thanks for listening to tonight's introduction to it. If you're interested in hearing the rest of this story, you can find more information at the Washington Free Public Library. Or when the library is able to reopen its doors, you'll find a copy available for checkout. Thanks for joining me to hear about J.C.'s World. I'm Dave Stouffer.